Hey everybody, Brian here with Whole Latte Love. Uh, joining me for this one is Missy. Hey. Uh, you, I know you've done a lot of these videos, but uh, go ahead and tell them what you do for us. Yeah, so I'm the sales team lead. If you call to speak to one of our coffee experts, that'll be you know me and my team. And we also answer emails, do coffee casts. So that's like a one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting uh, where we're here in the studio and can demo machines for you. To schedule that on the website, there's a little orange banner on the top you can mm -hmm. click on and um, choose a date and time that works for you, and we'd be happy to kind of give you a rundown on whichever machine you'd like to check out. All right, but in this video, we're going to unbox and set up a Gaja Anima Prestige. Now, if you hear Prestige after a Gaja product, that probably means that it has a milk wrap. Not just probably, it does. Yeah. It means it has one-touch milk services, which is unbeatable. Uh, so yeah, what we're going to do is we're going to go through several of the settings, but uh, let's just get this out of the box for now. Ugh. Not too heavy. Okay. All right, we've got this top part. We'll I'll go do through. the heavy lifting for <laughs> you. Yeah, you. We'll go over some of the stuff over there in a moment, but let's get this out here. All right, and mm -hmm. as I said, we've got a couple pieces of protective film there. And... Right here mounted on the front is our carafe, where the milk is going to go. And so there we go. Let's just pop that open. Right, and I, you know, I don't know if you can see that maybe from the, but we've got the, the drip tray has laser film on it. You literally can just put your fingernail under the corner here and just peel it all off. I'm not going to worry about that right now, but it is a nice polished steel drip tray yeah it is and the laser film is on there as part of the manufacturing process mm -hmm. um so it isn't anything to do with like protecting things and shipping or transition it's just like part of how the metal itself is manufactured right. in case you're wondering and missy's already get, gotten <laughs> gone ahead and started taking off some of the tape up here we've got one on each of these doors along there the top to make sure that they don't come off and then one down here holding the coffee spout in place. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's go ahead. Uh, did you, you got the plug over there? Let's see, yeah. yes, we All have right. our three foot plug. Three foot plug, good. Uh, that, sh that should be good to make it over there. Mm -hmm. All right, and then from the back, you've got where you, where you put the plug in and there's also a power switch on the back. You're gonna wanna know that. Yeah. Oh, too far? And the line, the circle's off, the line is on. Right. And you want to make sure that that gets in there nice and snug because it can sometimes get a little loose. Uh, and then there's also a power button up here on the front. And so once you get that plugged in, it's going to start flashing. And then we're going to turn it on. Before we do anything else, though, one thing I'm going to want to do is, there we go, use our handy dandy scoop that we have here. That's going to be mostly, once you, once you get all set up, it's going to be used for the, right here, we've got the bypass doser. If you're using pre-ground coffee, put it in here, a nice level scoop, only mm -hmm. one. Level only scoop. one level scoop. And then you, you would drop it right in there. And then we'll go over that later. But what I'm going to use right now is the, the hex setting on the back of here, because this is how you adjust the grind size on your machine. And as Nick likes to say, it's kind of like using a, a opening up a pill bottle, but you're mm -hmm. going to push down and turn. I'm going to turn it all the way to the left. And there's a little arrow there. I, you're definitely not going to be able to see it from the camera, but yeah. it, it's pointing to the smallest size little circle. And that means that we're as fine as we can get as it fine as we because can get it. I like a strong cup. And honestly, if you're making lots of like big cups of coffee, it's not like a huge deal if you don't set it all the way to the finest. I, I like it to be strong. I tend to prefer it on the finest setting too. Right. So, so all right. And Should so- Should I get you some water? Right. Our first warning here on the screen uh, is going to be, oh, oh my gosh, I just <laughs> popped you right in the face there. Uh, it's going to be, it's, whenever the screen goes red, it's almost always something needs to happen. And yeah. so first step is we're going to add some water to it. Yeah, we're going to add some water. Why don't you just grab the pitcher there and just pour sure. it straight in. I'll but yes, yeah, you in. can, you can remove the whole reservoir. We can show that. It mm -hmm. comes in and out. But as you can see, it, everything kind of loads from the top. You've got the water, you've got the, the beans 
all load from the top. So maybe that's something you want to keep in mind if you're going to be putting this under a countertop. Oh, uh, well, under cabinets, on a countertop. Yeah. <laughs> you can put it under a countertop too, but that would be a, little strange. a challenge. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right. Cool. So it is letting us know that it's going to rinse. Right. And so... Or prime when it's where first... Where did we put that glass? The, I think the Pyrex is over there behind... Yeah. Oh, yep. There, there we go. Cool. And so we're just going to position this under the hot water spout, which is right here. And then and I'm going to press the check mark. Mm -hmm. um, so this Aroma Strength button has a check mark icon next to it. Anytime it asks for the check mark, you're going to press the whole button. And All then right. go. It wants to make sure we got the hot water spout in there, yeah. which we do. And now it's going okay. to basically prime the water system in the machine. Yeah. And it's really just that fast. Uh, and then we're going to start heating up, as you can see. Mm -hmm. There will be a slight rinse, but I, on the initial setting setup, uh, you probably won't get any water out of the spouts, mm -hmm. but you might still, just in case. Yeah. Uh, since we're going to start making coffee, I'm going to put some beans in there. So Cool. Well, you know what? We've been doing Crema Wave a lot. I'm going to try our single origin uh, Columbia Tolima beans. Uh, I, I really like a, a lighter roast, so you can definitely use that in this machine. Uh, maybe stay away from really dark oily beans, but mm -hmm. for, for what we're doing here, this is going to be a great coffee. And now with any of the, any super automatic really, the first shot, the grinder is going to be calibrating based on your beans and the grind size. So the first shot might look a little bit watery. There is an algorithm at play. Mm -hmm. Um, so just keep that in mind. Right. First shot, you can probably just dump that one and then definitely the first running. shot. The, we're mm -hmm. going to show you the yeah. the second shot's going to be much better. Third mm -hmm. one better after that. It usually takes about eight to ten shots for the uh, the product recognizing grinder to fully like get in its tweak it to perfection. Yeah. That's right. Tweak mm -hmm. it to perfection. All right. So, but what we wanted to do was just make a coffee. So let's let's just do an es that that first one. We'll put it in a cappuccino mug. Okay. Uh, and you can adjust the spouts down there. So what do you think? Just leave it on here and do espresso or should let's we? Let's do a lungo. Lungo. Okay, I'm going to do, going to get that up there and do this. Now, a lungo is just a long coffee. Um, if you want to drink a regular cup of coffee, you can also get this set up to where you can adjust the volume on that mm -hmm. and press this twice um, to do a like a regular style cup of coffee. Right. I find that the coffee this makes is really smooth. Right. And yeah. when you press it twice, you get two grind settings, uh, two grind cycles. That me yeah, I mean. grind size. Yeah, so it'll grind, tamp, brew, grind, tamp, brew. So that you're not getting just a weak shot of right. coffee. Mm -hmm. But as you can see, speaking of weak shot of coffee, as we were saying, the first shot is definitely very watered down because we're, s we're still not really like getting the idea of that grinder yet. We've got to get the brew unit all set up mm -hmm. over here. We'll show you that later. Exactly. But yeah. Yeah. And then um, the machine also comes with a water test strip. So keep that in mind when you first get that. Um, you can just put we'll, this. We'll show that we'll here show in that? just okay, a moment. Okay, cool. But yeah, so as you can see, that's, that's our Lungo. That's I'm estimating probably about five ounces of liquid. This is a mm -hmm. six ounce mug. Uh, so yeah, that's, but as you can see, we're, we're clear. That's clearly not espresso. Mm -hmm. um, but let's just go ahead, now that we've got that dialed in a little bit better, I'm going to pull an espresso right into here. Actually, you know what? I see Should what you're we doing. Do? Let's go straight for a, yeah, you know what? Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. So we've got the milk craft. We're going to throw some milk in there. Uh, that uh, well, my, yeah, my, my good friend this. Mark was kind enough to grab for us. He's, he's back there. If you've got any questions, he'll give them to us up here. Thank you, Mark, as always. But as you can see with, with the, the, the carafe, there's a little lid here that you can just take off. You don't even have to remove the whole top assembly. Yeah. And you just take that lid, open up, and there's like a little spot for you to put it in there. Yep. So this carafe... All you gotta do is take off your, your hot water spout. Whoop. You pinch both sides and then you put it in here and you can see right there, it kind of clicks in place. Mm -hmm. So it'll do it at an angle. 
And we're just going to open it right now. It'll tell us to do that anyway, but we're going to go mm -hmm. ahead and do that. Let's get another cappuccino. And so... I will hit cappuccino. Yeah. And then it's, it's telling, telling us to us put the milk craft in and to open okay. it up. Of Heating course, we've up. already done that. We've used this machine a couple times in the past, so we kind of <laughs> know what to expect. Yeah. Um, but we'll go into some of the some of the settings and the way that you can like calibrate these drinks to your specific likings here in just a moment. But we just really wanted to get you drinking a drink as quickly as possible. So. Mm -hmm. Right now we're heating up to make that milk because we're going to put the milk in first for the cappuccino. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. Beautiful. And we're using whole milk here. That works really well in these crafts. It'll steam the milk. And then it's going to grind, tamp, and brew. That is correct. But we get the milk first on the cappuccino. Uh, I believe this machine makes all the drinks milk first. Uh, I don't think it has the ability to switch between the different drinks. There we go. Perfect. And if we, while we're doing this, if you could get in tight on the on the menu here, we can just go over quickly some of the some of the drinks that you can do. Um, so we've got the espresso. We've got the espresso lungo. Aroma strength is how you're going to change the strength uh, of your drink by changing the amount of, of ground espresso that's in it. And then we have the cappuccino, the latte macchiato, and accessing the menu. And so, Let's wow, yeah, there's, there's your cappuccino right there for sure. Awesome. You, st you stopped that too, didn't you? No, I didn't. It was perfect. Holy mackerel. It was perfect. That's, what that's what great. size glass is this? It's a six ounce. Six ounce. So yeah. Nice Italian style cappuccino. Yeah. Nice head on there. Yeah. Like, I mean, and Quick this was, you, you saw how long this yeah. took. Yeah. Like, I'm going to take a sip. I know. I'm betting he gets a little on his mustache. No, that's all right. <laughs> that's all right. It's very hot though. Yeah. My goodness. That, you know, if they say that these don't get hot, they're lying to you because that, that burned me. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, but but hold off, hold off on drinking those maybe. But so let's go into uh, well, how we miss the milk clean. So what do we do if we miss the milk clean? If you it? miss the milk clean, you can hit the menu button right here. All right. And then go to there's these little icons that'll say up and down, so you can use the menu button as you're down. Select drinks, and then hot water, and then. This is going to purge the milk carafe right. if you happen to have missed it. And so I already put, put something in place there. Yeah, because we're going to get the water through there. Pyrex, awesome. But it's going to heat up there for a second, and then just once you see the water start to pouring out and not milk, go ahead and say we're done. And cool. you can close that up. Take that off and put that right back in the fridge for the next time you want to use it. Do we want to take it out? You know what? Yeah. Just take it out. Okay. But, you know, because it was a, a cappuccino, I, I just want to take a moment because, you know, because that was a cappuccino, you didn't really get a good shot of what the espresso is looking like now. So I just want to pull a quick espresso here, too. And cool. as we were as we were talking about right here up on the menu, you can adjust the strength of the coffee. So... You can either go, well, and right there, as we, as we mentioned before, that's how you're going to use your, your pre-ground pre scoop. Put it right, right up here in the uh, bypass chute. That's what bypass we call it. Uh, and we can go one, two, three, four, or five beans. I prefer five, personally. Well, if Missy prefers five, that's what we're going to do. So let's just pull <laughs> an espresso then. Just a regular old espresso. Oh, this would have been a good time to show the, the program. Oh, yeah. That. The memo function. Yeah. This will be a good shot. I think this, yeah, you're, you're going to see. And as you can see, we've got the, the spouts all the way extended here. You can have these all the way up and fit quite a nice large cup. I, I think that this is of the more beginner level, entry level Gaja machines. Mm -hmm. I would say that this one is one of the better ones for larger drinks. There and as you go. can see, like in comparison to that first one I showed you, mm -hmm. look at that. You've got yeah. the, the cascading foam. 
Yeah, and keep in mind that this is a single origin coffee. Right. And you're still getting crema on it, which yeah. is awesome. You want to try that one? I do. Okay. Yeah. I bet it's going to be all right. But yeah. It's good. And wonderful. And so let's go over some of the things in the menu now, if you wouldn't mind going okay. over that. Okay, yeah. See. Okay, so we're going to hit menu. And I'm going to look first at the drink menu. So we obviously, we have the initial, you know, espresso, lungo, we have cappuccino, and latte macchiato. And then we also have some additional drinks in there, which is hot water. So this is really convenient with that spout in. Right. Um, you can obviously use it for Americanos, um, for... Tea? Tea. Yeah. Yeah, uh, no. It's perfect. Also instant noodles I've used it for. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I've, Very I've made oatmeal with it for sure. <laughs> yeah. And then um, we have frothed milk. So if you wanted to make some hot chocolate for uh, some kids, you can make a chai as well for some non-coffee drinkers. Mm -hmm. It's really convenient to have that there. Right. And, and so let's go yeah. back into the menu settings then. Okay. Menu settings. And so when you're in the menu here. Click check. We can adjust the coffee temperature. Yeah, so we can adjust the coffee temperature, and this is a global setting that'll change the coffee temperature on all of the drinks. All the drinks. Standby. This is going to allow us to choose a certain amount of time for the machine to go into an eco mode, energy saving. Mm -hmm. Display contrast, if we wanted this to be uh, brighter, yep. just for the screen and the text there. And so let's do that water, water hardness, hardness test. So cool. this is where we're going to set the water hardness of the machine. Came with um, the test strip? It comes with the test strip, but Miss, Missy's got there. Let's open that up. And you know what? We we did use the the BWT, so mm -hmm. why not why not test the BWT water, which is gonna hopefully be not too hard. Okay. So just put a little in what there. you're gonna do is just get some water out put it in a container of some sort or you can even just dip it straight into there if that's what you're using why not um, but yeah she's gonna dip it in there literally just swirl it around for less than a minute you don't really have to do much that's good but let's go back to the menu here I'll just set this here and we're going to go to the water hardness and so we've got four three two and one and so what we've got there is four, three, two, and one is going to be how many of these little boxes turn a kind of orangish red color, I feel like. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it'll turn sort of red. Uh, obviously, we're using a BWT Penguin, well, aqualizer pitcher here, so mm -hmm. the water is going to be pretty clean. Mm -hmm. So, but I almost feel like... It's like one and a half. Yeah, and I think that we're good for just one. Okay. So, we're going to scroll down the menu to number one and confirm that get that nice check makes me feel good about myself mm. and so uh, some of the other settings if you don't mind me taking over yeah we've got the water filter so the machine comes with a water filter which it actually doesn't oh yeah so it but does not come with the intensa we can bundle one in right area. so it the intensa water filter get get it out here so this is the one you're going to use is mm -hmm. the uh intensa water filter so basically you're going to pri prime it by putting it underwater and squeezing it until all the air comes out of it. Mm -hmm. And then it's quite simple. Uh, you know what? Let's just lift that out. If you looked at yeah, the sides there. And so there's w the water inlet is right there. And you just put that in there and just cover that up. Basically yeah, just like, like that. that. Yeah. And so and then every, all the water that your machine pulls through it is going to be filtered automatically. So you mm -hmm. don't even have to worry about the water you're putting in. Yeah, it, really. and you can let the machine know if you're going to be using the water filter and what your water hardness settings are, and then the machine will prompt you when to change your filter and descale based on that. Right, which we're getting ahead of ourselves here, but when we go back to the menu, you're going to see we can set the descaling. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's going to be when you need to really like deep clean the machine. Uh, how often would you say? It varies based on your water hardness for yeah. sure. I would say probably maybe like w every one to two years potentially, yeah. but it, it varies a lot based on your water right. hardness. Yeah, I mean if you if you use good water, it's it's going to drastically limit the amount yeah. of buildup that your machine's going to have. Mm -hmm. 
And potentially, like, if you used one of these, you might not have to right. frequently at all. So. Right. And then it looks like we've got, and then we can go back to the factory reset if, if you mm -hmm. really want to set it all the way back to those factory settings. Mm -hmm. uh, w within those coffee temps, you can do min, medium, and max. We mm -hmm. kind of skipped over that, but I, I, I think that that's important. That is. Even yeah. at medium, that cappuccino was plenty hot enough for me. Yeah, the espresso is very hot. Yeah, so, but uh, what else can we show you? Let, let's show you how to program a drink. I think that's a very key thing. Yes. So we've got a, a nice tall glass here. Okay. Um, and once again, we can just adjust the spout, put that under there, and let's program a lungo. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is hold this down, and then it's going to say memo. And it'll start brewing. So once the machine has brewed to the desired amount, then I'll press the check mark. That's correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so, honestly, you can set your, sh you can make a shot that's a ristretto. You could have a short yeah. shot. You could set a drink that fills a cup. Yeah. Um, or for like this, we could set it so that it fills maybe halfway, since it's a big cup, fills and then, halfway, yeah. and then we could do a two times drink. And so then we it get would more ground coffee in that's there. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It'll make a nice, stronger coffee. But my gosh, look at the quality of that espresso already. Yeah. It, I mean, what was this, the fourth shot we've pulled? Maybe third. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't take long for you to get a good shot, but that first one, yeah, you're going to want to pour that out. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Maybe to here, and then I'll set it? So yeah, you know, up here, let me wipe off some of the steam. So we've got the check mark, and basically yeah, all she's going to do is hit that check mark, and it finishes brewing. Mm -hmm. And now... When she hits the Lungo. espresso lungo button yeah. again, it's going to give her the same amount. Yeah. So I'll hit it again. Because this is what I would typically do at home for if I were going to want like a regular style cup of coffee. I would just punch this twice, stick my cup under there, and then I'm good to go. Um, yeah. yeah. So I know I had... Um, I had one of these machines at home, and that's what, what my father-in-law's favorite drink was, just that regular cup of coffee. He's yeah. usually a Tim Hortons guy, and he said it was a lot better than uh, some of the chain coffees that he's tried. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> so. But no, I mean, and you can tell the quality of the coffee you're getting from that, it's, it's not really as much like a cup of coffee as much as like a long espresso, because in yeah. many ways that's what you're getting, especially mm -hmm. considering that we find up that grind size all the way. But yeah, you can see that. I mean, it, it almost looks like a stout. Yeah, it's nice it's, and dark. It's not it's a nice weak It's nice and cup dark. It's got the, the cascade coming down. And it's still a nice little head there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, and look at that. Yeah, you programmed that almost perfectly, Missy. Thank you. <laughs> no, and that's, I mean, that's a gorgeous yeah. looking cup. You can have it. I, I, I don't need any more today. Well, then I'll have some. <laughs> okay. I, I, I could use it. So, do we have any questions, Mark? Oh, wonderful. Oh, that's really yes, good. we do. We have a few. Um, can you use almond milk or 2% milk in the carafe? That is a wonderful question. Um, I would say 100%, 2% would work, no problem. Yeah, no problem with 2%. Uh, almond milk, I. It varies on the brand. Right, it varies on the brand. Uh, usually, with the with the Gaja machines, I find that the. Uh, carafes work better with the less viscous uh, non-dairies. Uh, almond should be fine. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, we did a series of shorts a little while ago, and I'm pretty sure we put almond milk through uh, uh, Gaja Academia, which is mm -hmm. sort of a, you know, this was actually built on the old Academia body. Yeah. Uh, so it's a very similar experience. Some of the design points, yeah. Um, the To get super in-depth about it, it depends on the surfactants in the milk, but like... The fat right. content in the non-dairy milk, I would say if it's something where it has too much fat content, it might be more difficult to use in the carafe. Mm -hmm. If it has a lower fat content, it should be okay. Right. Yeah. yeah. Anything else, Mark? Uh, yeah. So, uh, this, uh, Samuel Bahula joined late and would like to know what adjustment range does the grinder have if you want to swap between light and dark roast? So that's a great question too. Uh, if switching between light and dark roasts, mm -hmm. um, 
on here. It has the grind adjustments in there, and we have one, two, three, four different levels. One, two, three, four, five different levels of the grind size. Um, so you could go all the way to the coarsest, especially if you were going to do just like a Lungo with a, I, you can do Lungo with either a medium or right. a light. I would say almost when switching between uh, like the roast of a coffee, it's almost less about adjusting the grinder and more about adjusting your dose. That makes sense. Um, so if you were using uh, a heavier dose on your lighter roast, that would give you a stronger cup. But if you're using a heavier roast on a darker roast, you're actually getting more coffee because darker roasts are <laughs> more porous beans. They lose weight as they get further roasted. So adjusting your dose is probably going to be your first step. So maybe try using a little less coffee on a darker roast than on a lighter roast. Um, you know, if you're, if you're, you're almost always going to fill the, the hopper up here with beans. Like you're, I, I, I can't imagine ever single dosing a, a machine like this. Yeah. So, but to be honest, I don't really, I feel like you could just set it on the finest setting and then right. keep, even if you did it at the max aroma strength each time and you select the different drinks, I don't find a need to adjust it personally. Like right. this tastes great the right. way that it is. And the grinder self adjusts depending on what you have in there. So, if, you, if you're changing coffees, it will actually change, like I said, because darker roasts are more porous, they're lighter beans, mm -hmm. each bean is lighter. Um, and so it will adjust accordingly mm -hmm. as it sees the, the, the amount of coffee being produced by the grinding cycle. Yeah. So I would say a couple things there, you know, you know it was, I just covered a lot, but first I would try changing your, your dose uh, using, using the aroma strength, yeah. and then maybe uh, just Try, you can try changing the grind size. I don't think it's going to matter. I don't think it'll matter either. Yeah. I would just keep it on the finest grind setting, strongest aroma strength personally. Yeah. And then based on if you're doing espresso or Lungo, I would play with those parameters. Right. Yeah. Anything else, Mark? Yeah? Uh, yeah. So uh, Daniel had another question. Okay. Uh, what's the recovery time between drinks? Like, would this be, you know, can you use it at home or a small office, say, with three people? I think it would be a little small for a small office. Uh, what, he says small office with three people? That is a very small office. Uh, I guess it could, yeah, that would I be I think okay. that would easily be yeah. able to handle three. I mean, th yeah, three a family people usually has fun. more than three people. Yeah. And, uh, the, the, and the, the atomic family, is that what they, they call it? But <laughs> mother, father, and two kids? Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, this could easily handle three users, 100%. Uh, the the turnaround time for drinks, because of the uh, thermal block uh, boiler in mm -hmm. here, it's it's nothing. I mean, we could continue pulling, making drinks as long as there were still beans and water in yeah. it, back to back to back. You're not going to run into any problems. Yeah, if it's a larger office, you might look at like a Cadorna or a Academia, but three people, no problem. Yeah, I, I would see no problem at all. Mm -hmm. Right. And so uh, while we have a moment, let's let's go ahead. Uh, I'm going to open it up. Uh, if we can it. get in there, Mark. Let's just show that this is where all the excess water goes down in mm -hmm. there. And uh, obviously, we rinsed out the machine because we just opened it up and started right. for the first time. So. And you're going to see uh, the, that the pucks, you know, they're, they're breaking up because they're not, it, it hadn't really figured out the coffee yet. And so, but the most recent one looks pretty darn good. Um, but yeah, and the, how many pucks does that hold in there? Do you know, Missy? It holds 15 pucks total. 15 and the drip pucks tray, total? yeah, it runs across the entire bottom of the machine because it's also catching water from underneath the brew group. Right, and the mm -hmm. brew, oh, I, I shouldn't have closed that up. So yeah. let's, and then th there's a door on the side over here. Mm -hmm. And then there's our brew unit right there. The there's our brew unit. Our robot barista right there. Yes, and. and the serial numbers on the inside of the door, if you ever need that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's 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 important to know too, because if you're calling in, uh, God forbid, uh, it's it's important to have that information. But the, your brew group here, you can just pinch this where it says push, pinch that, pull it straight out. Oop, a little bit of water. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just take that out, bring it over to the sink. No soap, but just rinse it with some hot water, maybe once a week, depending on how much yeah. you're using it, really. Yeah, depending on your use, you can rinse it even just with room temperature water under the sink. 
dry it with some paper towels or leave it in your dish rack, uh, pop it back in. And then monthly there's a clean process. It's very easy to. That's right. So. And then over here also under it, we've got a little, a little cup. I, I don't know if you would call it a cup, but a little tray, a tray down there that catches the water and directs it right down into that, that drip, drip, drip tray, tray that we yeah. showed. But this is important to clean too because uh, if you can get that overhead shot, this little hole, if, if we get coffee in there, mm -hmm. it could clog and then the water is not going down into it. It could pour out the side of the machine. Mm -hmm. We've, you know, so this is also important to take out, mm -hmm. take out, give that a rinse, clean it, and then. Yeah, and also just like, it's good to rinse it out. Just keep it nice and clean so there's no icky old coffee grounds in there because nobody wants that. Mm -hmm. And then we just snap it back in, close it back up. Uh, and now we're out of water. Wow. So we, went we made a water. lot of drinks here. We made a lot of drinks. <laughs> well, I guess it's all in this one cup, yeah. too. So, do we, any, any more questions there, Mark? No? All right. Well, I think that we covered all, everything we wanted to talk about here. We got you up and running with a couple drinks, showed you how to use the milk craft. And mm -hmm. um, so, if you have any more questions, don't forget you can keep sending them into the, into the YouTube comments because we check those even after we're not live anymore. Um, but yeah, there, that's the Gaja Anima Prestige. Ah, uh, boy. I <laughs> <laughs> it's a great machine, honestly. It's got yeah. metal construction. It really works well. It's been around for, uh, what, eight years? Yeah, I think? yeah. It's a dependable machine. And dependable, reliable. Um, I also like that this one's silver versus the regular Anima in black. Right. So. Well, yeah, it, it, a lot of people do. Yeah. So. But uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, we'll be back here in a little while for some more of these live streams. But for now, uh, I want to say thank you for watching and uh, keep on brewing.